today, I did okay. Can you see that? 394%. Woo! Toast. To... I don't know what. The great game. <laughs>Jumping right into the one minute chart, this morning started with a run down. And as soon as the price fell below this yellow line here at $26.66, I knew that a further drop was due. Again, I have a price target in the 20s, and that's an intermediate price target on a path down to $7. And I'm going to show that analysis coming up. As soon as the price fell through this level, it came back up and retested and rejected it. This was the confirmation that the fall was imminent and the free fall began and we saw a couple of different consolidations before finally finding a bottom near $22.50. What a drop. What a drop. There was a small corrective rally and the price did not rise above that point again throughout the day. Instead consolidating and then listing off to the side. Overall the candle on the daily chart is looking nasty. Gonna show you really quick. Here's my daily chart. You can see in red the ascending triangle and in yellow, the symmetrical triangle target. And today was just a dump, having after closed below that symmetrical triangle target on the prior trading session on Friday. And you'll see in purple, I have this bear flag, and that's actually supposed to be viewed on a different time frame. I think that's on my, my 15 minute, yeah, there you go. This is what I was looking at at the end of the week last week. A rejection of this level, and then a bear flag appeared, and what do you know, today looks almost exactly like those last two days. We have another leg down, okay, and another high and tight bear flag. Another high and tight bear flag. Incredible stuff. You just can't make this up. Saw this coming weeks ago. Well, not weeks ago, but well in the last week. I did know that this run up, this was setting up for a big measured move down, which also has a price target below $10. Incredible. I just can't even believe that this is actually happening, but it is. And the volume today was actually pretty high. And we're in an increasing trend in terms of volume. Gonna zoom back out to the one day time frame, zoom back in, and you can see the last three trading sessions have increasing volume, one, two, and three. Today's volume coming in at 83 million. Quite a bit. It's not as much as we've seen in the past, but it is an increase. The implied volatility is also increasing as well. I don't have that study pulled up. Let me pull it up really quick. Uh, load study set, standard, there we go. Big jump in the implied volatility. Doof. Over the last three days, we've seen the implied volatility rise from 148% all the way up to nearly 200%. Incredible. It's just going up and up and up, and volume is beginning to increase. The RSI is doing precisely what I thought it would do, and that is it's beginning its plunge into the oversold region. This purple line showing what I was expecting to see, and that is what is there. Now, just because the RSI has reached this level does not mean it's about to reverse. The RSI can remain in the oversold area for a very long time, and that's what my video over the weekend was about, the RSI. It is very possible to see the RSI continue to dip. Oh my goodness, yes, continue to dip into the oversold region. And honestly, even if we do see a pullback tomorrow, getting above 30 is going to be a challenge. I really think so. Having fallen below the prior lows of the last two weeks, which were around 25.50 is a big deal. Falling below these levels is a big deal. The floodgates are about to open. The short positions have never been stronger than right now. Do not be fooled. I'm gonna open up the weekly chart too. I wanna to show you where my $7 price target comes from and I am trying to blast through this at a record pace. Mostly because if I'm gonna to continue to provide this analysis on a daily basis, I need to make these videos shorter and my analysis more concise because Sustainability is a thing. I need to be able to just do this for a long sustained period of time. So this is where I'm getting my $7 price target right here. This descending triangle. It's huge, isn't it? It's huge. And the apex is way out here, off in May. At that apex, I'm going to be expecting to see a turn in the overall price trend. And I don't know what that's going to look like. It's too far out in the future. But I do think it is possible to see a drop in the price of AMC all the way until that point, until mid next year. The target exactly was $7.06. And it's a very interesting price target because if you look, that's where the double top formed prior to the lows in 2020. And this was what this was the level that the price fell from before forming that triple bottom earlier in 2020. 
So to see the price return to that level would make a lot of sense. And the RSI is just getting wrecked on the timely, on the weekly time frame. Implied volatility is increasing, and again, you're gonna see that I have a little gap here. Thanks, TD Ameritrade, for the broken chart. I do anticipate seeing the implied volatility make a run up, like we saw earlier this year in a couple of different times. The first being the first run in January, right? And the second being in June. I think we're gonna see another spike in implied volatility. Will it be as high? I don't know. It very well could be as high as either of these prior peaks. At the moment, it is beginning to increase more sharply, at least on the weekly scale. Wow, what a day today. All I can say is, I think that there's more downside. That's all there is to it. That's just what it looks like. This run is starting. It is picking up speed. There is no sign of stopping yet. And what I actually anticipate seeing is a gap down into tomorrow's trading session, either Tuesday or onto Wednesday. And I think the biggest red candle yet has yet to be seen. In a vertical run down, Bulkowski summarizes on his webpage, he, he identifies four black or red candles. And each starts at about where the previous one closed. And that's what we're looking for on the daily time scale. Currently on the four hour chart, we're in this descending channel, downward channel. And this channel began way back here in September. Essentially, we had the run up to 72, a consolidation, a drop, and a retracement. This would be the retracement from the initial run up. It's important to think of these big price moves in the longest time frames you can because these longer time frames are going to provide the most accurate picture. This was a retracement bounce up into the 50s and when it rejected, this was a good sign that the price was actually going to continue to fall. And what a downward channel it is. There was an opportunity to break out above it with the double bottom here and it consolidated into a symmetrical triangle ultimately falling down and forming the beginning of this measured move down. We now find ourselves at a very crucial junction of this channel closing below the lower level. This could indicate that downside is about to happen again. And in a vertical rundown, that fourth bar could be the tallest bar. Uh, Bukowski does mention that the vertical rundown does have a retracement opportunity, but he recommends holding through it, which is crazy to me. He says after a vertical run ends, Price continues to climb 46% of the time, completely retracing the drop suffered in the vertical run. Okay, so there's a 50% chance that we'll see a return to the levels previous. Most of the time, 84% of the time, the stock will retrace at least a portion of the move down. The other 16% sees price continue dropping, but at a slower pace. And this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a big, 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 big nosedive down. And then here's Bukowski's trading tips. Now, this is what I find most interesting. He says 75% of the time, 75% of gaps, I should say, taller than 25 cents are continuation gaps, not exhaustion gaps in a vertical run down. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. If there's a gap down tomorrow, if in pre-market the price falls, and at open the price continues to fall, that would be a, con a continuation gap. Not an exhaustion gap, a continuation gap, meaning that the downside is only beginning. It just gets more and more red. Here's an example, and this looks almost exactly what we're looking at in AMC. Let me pull back out into the daily chart here, and... Uh, Turn on my daily drawings as well. I'm going to clean up my charts just a little bit. Bear with me, bear with me. Delete, delete, delete. They're just bear flags. They're easy to draw. Okay. Here, here we have a big decline, a bounce up, and then another leg down. And this is what happens here too. You can see the leg down, a bounce up, and then a further leg down. And this at point A, you can see there is a small jump here, and we haven't seen that. We are, though, in this big descending fall. It is possible that... This point A could have been this corrective phase up here where this purple circle is. Very possible. And now we see one, two, three, and I'm looking for that fourth or that fifth bar finding its way down to price B. This is nuts. He says, after bar four, that is, once the vertical rundown has been established, I would use a trailing stop. So even once this pattern is complete, he would still trade to the downside, which is nuts. Now this pattern doesn't necessarily have a confirmation signal. It's just a, it's a candlestick pattern almost. So it is possible that this may not occur, but if it does, I think the worst has yet to come, and we'll see those downtrends, those big, big, big drops, Tuesday and Wednesday, most likely. I'm not quite ready to start buying calls and flip to the long side yet. Not until I see the RSI reverse. This is just looking so, so bearish. Even if the RSI does recover, it's going to need to stay 
It's gonna have to break through 45 and get above 55 before we can see a true recovery come into play. Any other jump or move up in the price that does not push the RSI over these levels is only a correction phase. It is nothing more than a bounce. It will not be a recovery. And I know there's a lot of talk of a spring, but I do not see it. What I see is this incredible trend in the implied volatility. And this is what I'm trading is the implied volatility. And it is just going up and up and up. We may see a, uh, an increase in, in this implied volatility. It may become even more steep, more pronounced as volume continues to increase. Today was a good day to trade puts. And I continue to trade puts. And um, I forgot to write it on the board, but I'm currently holding a lot of puts, a lot of puts. Let me see here. All right, I have them on the board, my current open positions. I have December 17th, $24 put, and a January 21st, $10 put. And so far, both positions are deeply green, at 125 and 230%. I do anticipate seeing, at, well, those $10 puts may run into the money. So final thoughts? This dip is just beginning. It is just starting and it's time to deeply consider your strategy if you're not making money at the moment.